up or hold me down, uh, have my back or hold my crown, either you with me or not, but you better give all you got, cause I break the chains, can't control me, I got the power, I got the keys, you ready? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Today on Dirt Lifestyle, we're going to do a little questions and answers, walk around video type of scenario with my friend Cap. If you have been watching my channel over the last few videos, you know that uh, Cap or Andy, yeah. whatever you want to call whatever him, he was with me at uh, our Moab trip, and a lot of people had a lot of questions about this Jeep. So I guess we'll start from the top. What is the year, make, and model of your Jeep? Uh, the Jeep is a 1991 YJ Wrangler. And I know there's a story behind getting it. There's a little bit of a story. Uh, <laughs> had to keep up with Nate. So uh, yeah. I went and found myself. Uh, my cousin was selling it. It was on 33s with a four-cylinder manual transmission. Yeah. And a yeah. uh, little lift. Whatever. This was back, this would have been like 2006 or so. 2006. Um, I had just got my Jeep. Um, and I, I heard through one of our other friends that you got a Jeep. Yeah. And I was like, dude, let's meet at yep. Beaver Pond. Yep. <laughs> And for you, and, yeah, for, for those of you who don't know, it's like, it's it's not really a wheeling spot. It no. was more like a place you're not supposed to go wheeling. But, you if know, you're 19, it's a wheeling yeah, spot. Yes, <laughs> it's a lot of gravel roads and like one little hill, and that's why we called it a wheeling. We, we still managed to get stuck out there. But. And so, um, yeah, I had a I had two Blazers before my Jeep, and I got my Jeep, I think I was 20. And uh, just a couple months later, this would have been like 06. Yep. He got his Jeep, and he's been my longest-running wheeling buddy. Been wheeling together for a long time. Yeah, a few breaks in there with my... A few breaks. Yeah. He, he takes long big breaks <laughs> and completely reinvents the wheel with this thing, but this last iteration is the best iteration. Yeah, so it's working. the reason you guys haven't really seen it until like the last six months or so um, is because he just finished it from like the last big chunk of work, and now it is obviously it's the best that you have built it so far out of it's, any iteration. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, so far, it's working... It, it's pretty much point almost and shoot. exactly the way that I wanted to. So, yeah. yeah. In fact, right here, I'll cut a little section, yeah. and you can just see him point and shooting up some obstacle. People are going to ask a lot about the drivetrain, so let's cover. Let's go from engine to transmission to transfer case, and we'll start with what is the engine out of, uh, what mods do you have done to the engine, and how much right. horsepower does it make. So uh, I bought a parts truck, it had a, a six liter in it, six liter LS series motor. It's an LQ4 block, which is the truck motor iron block. Um, I had a six liter in it previously, and when I tore it down to do some stuff to it, the cam bearings came out with the cam. So I got a new block, tore that apart when I got it out of the truck, and it was really, it was bad. So uh, just a lot of sludge, and you could tell, didn't get a lot of oil changes. The truck so, motor. Yeah. Uh, tore it all down, uh, did Gen 4 rods, which are the stronger of the connecting rods that you can get for that, that year or that series of motor. I uh, did flat top pistons. We did 30 overbore, uh, LS2 heads that are milled 20 thousandths. Uh, it puts the compression right around 12, four to one, I believe. And I did a, uh, tick. And, and I know people are going to ask, you run it on pump. Yeah, yeah. Runs I'm it on still, pump. Still running on 92. Yep. Yep. The cam is a Tick Performance Stage 2 Tomax cam or something like that. Um, toe. Not much of a toe cam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Toe if you tow it yeah. for four grand. <laughs> we, we revved it to like uh, 63 on the dyno and it's still making power. So It likes to sing. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds great when it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, so we're looking at a probably crank or somewhere around 500. Yeah, yeah, it made yeah made 390 on the dyno with some uh, 33s, something like that, truck tires on it. Uh, the 42s wouldn't fit on the dyno. So, but you lose a lot, a lot. through yeah. automatic transmission, yeah. big transfer case, yeah. big you know 14 bolt. Yeah. It, you lose a lot. Yeah. So that's why we're estimating. I think it f around 500. Yeah. If you're like 480, would be pretty conservative. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think, yeah, and it shows. I mean, the thing scoots, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So then we go to the transmission. What transmission do you have? Transmission is a 4LADE. Uh, had it rebuilt. A uh, couple things done to it. Nothing nothing too crazy. Just think, you know, the typical mods that people do when they have them apart. And then uh, it's got a stock converter, but in the 2500 HD, HD trucks, which is what this came out of, they actually had a little bit higher stall. 
I think it's 2,200 or something like that. People will correct me, I'm sure. It's a little <laughs> bit higher. A little bit higher. A little bit stall. higher. Stall. So it, it worked well with the cam. The it combo, complements the, the cam works, well. Works decent. Yeah, for sure. Uh, transfer case is a uh, NP241, which is a uh, it's a Chevy transfer case. It, it's a lot like the 231 that you'd see in your Jeep. Just has a six pinion planetary and an inch and a half chain. Bigger case. Yeah, a little bit stronger case. Yeah. So yeah, holds together pretty well. And uh, so like far, we've talked about before. They put that behind uh, Dodge Cummins for yep. a little bit. Yep. So I mean, it's a they strong can. case. For yep. sure, yep. two seven two to one uh, reduction, right? Yep, same as same as the two thirty one. Two thirty one. Yeah, yep. part. Yep. So and then uh, that feeds all that power to a front and rear axle. And what front and rear axles do you have? So I'm running the uh, Dana sixty Kingpin front high pinion Ford, uh, chromo shafts, five thirteen gears, and a Detroit locker. And then the rear is a fourteen bolt that five thirteens with a welded that's welded and then i did my own little shave kit to it it's not it's not as much as some of the ones you can buy but it, it helped a lot it well, has more clearance in the rear than it does in the front now in the so when you did it there wasn't like this there's a lot more options for shave kits now i think the tmr was the only one that was available when yeah. i did it and I, I was kind of cheap back then so i just spent four <laughs> and a half hours grinding the the ring gear in the carrier and yeah Making it, make it work in your shop. Try to learn how to do some arc welding, which I'm not super good at. So, yeah. so <laughs> rear's 30, it's a 35 spline 14 bolt. The front, right? Oh, 30 spline. Oh, it is a 30 spline. Yeah, it's 30 spline. Oh, but it's yeah. that weird inch and a half, inch yeah, and a half, half shaft. shaft. Yeah. 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 Um, the stock stubs <clears throat> in the front are 30 spline, and you upgraded those to 35. 35 spline chromoly. Yeah. Chromoly. Yep. Uh, after I broke one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which didn't take long with this power. No. I mean, before you never broke a shaft. I never did. And yeah, I've had the axle in it since, uh, man, I don't even know the year, 2010 Probably or something like that. Maybe even as early as 08, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's been in there for a long time. <laughs> it's been in there for a long time. About six different motors. and. But yeah. this one makes the most power for yeah, sure. He's absolutely. had a lot of Chevy V8s in there, but... Yep. Uh, I don't think the old 350 can keep up with no. a built 6.0. No, this one, this <laughs> For one sure. works pretty good. It works pretty good. And actually having somebody tune it helps a lot. So Certainly. <laughs> so um, you said you said the gears, right? 513s? 513s, yep. Um, we covered axle shaft diameter, all that other yep. stuff. So now I guess we could move out to tire size, uh, brand, and wheel, and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So tires, I'm running the 42-inch uh, PBR rockers. Um, and then wheels are the Dirty Life uh, Roadkill 17 by eight and a half, nine and a half, nine, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. And I know that you've had, <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure if I would say he's happy with them. I, I, the, I think on the yeah. outside looking in, they're doing awesome. Yeah, for, he, he doesn't have a traction yeah. problem. For Pacific Northwest, <laughs> they're a really great tire. They're just in, in the rocks, Moab, places like that. Um, they're just, they got kind of a little too stiff of a sidewall. I'm still technically waiting for them to break in, but... I think they're going to be bald before they, you know. So up here, it's nice to have a thick sidewall because yeah. trees and roots and stuff will just grab that's, and just rip. That's kind of the trail. So he's got, out. there's always a trade-off. That's how it is in the automotive world. <clears throat> so he's got these thick sidewalls that are really durable, but when he, he'll air down to like three, yeah. and the sidewalls are so thick and stiff that yeah. he doesn't get hardly any tire bulge. But whenever he goes over obstacles, you'll see it fold yeah, instead side, of... Side yeah. and it'll try to fold It'll over on itself try to that, fold. that also has to do with the fact that i'm running 17 inch rim with a 42 inch tire that's why true. some of those other brands that's go true to a 20 inch so you have more sidewall too but that's true yeah but so it, it, it's it's a thick sidewall it acts yeah. like a tire tire with a thick yeah. sidewall yeah. so yeah. i think on the outside looking in i think he should be very happy with yeah. these tires but he's like me he's a perfectionist yeah. he wants it to perform good in every scenario yeah. <laughs> and it's so hard to find a tire that does yeah. that so i need tires for different scenarios yeah. so now we can move to the chassis i think that um We've talked about this before. He did. He cut the front half of the frame off and yep. did some work. He cut the rear half, well, half, yeah. and now the middle half that's left. Yeah, there's <laughs> three halves. I, so, what percentage would you say is still the stock frame versus what you have cut and built yourself? Probably about thirty percent. And the center of the Jeep is still the stock rails, but everything's been cut off. The cross members are different, and everything's custom. The uh, Front half, I, I high pointed where it goes over the axle and ran two by two to get more clearance. And then I also have, it's a one inch body lift in the center part, but then at the front, I built the frame up higher. So it, I, I don't know, I, I, I did all that so you could get the tranny and the motor and everything underneath the frame rail so I'd be flat bellied. 
and that's kind of what I had to do, including rebuilding the floor. Uh, so for a lot of you guys that are watching <clears throat> that might, might not know why you would cut the front chunk and the rear chunk yeah. off, whenever you stretch TJs and YJs, and this is a YJ, yeah. um, it changes where like the little hump is, yeah. uh, where it, it get basically an accommodation for your axle. Yeah. And so since you stretch it, a lot of times people will bang, uh, you know, right into the, from their axle into their frame, or there's not enough space in there to put any suspension or whatever the right. case may be. Right. So you cut it in order to simplify yeah. it, make it to where you can stretch. And I, we should probably cover how stretched is it. Uh, it's a 108 wheelbase, so I think the I think the split's pretty even between front and back. I'm not exactly sure what the number is. Somewhere around seven and seven. I think stock it was 93. 93. So he stretched it to 108. So yeah. big yeah. stretch. Yeah. Real big stretch. Yeah, but it still works decent around here because we we have a lot of tight radius type of stuff so yeah you go much longer than that and then you're really definitely five point turn and some stuff like a four-door jk like 117 ish yeah. <clears throat> and uh it would be you could get through the busy wild yeah. with it but just, you would destroy it, it. takes longer huh? it, yeah, yeah. yeah you would be destroying doors and all yeah, kinds you spend of stuff. more time trying not to hit stuff than actually totally. having fun and you get hung up on your belly whereas this is i would say this is like as yeah. long as you get and comfortably get yeah. through without turning yeah. your rig into a raisin Kind of. So, yeah. And the look. I, I like the look. I mean, when, yeah. you, when you start getting into the 115, the rear axle's so far back that it's just... It looks it's like it's not under it the vehicle yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's, just, it's hard to make it look <laughs> totally. Cool. I, I don't know. Unless you back half it, and then it... Yeah. I think it looks awesome. And he's got it real nice and low, which makes yeah. it look kind of like a... has like this muscle car yeah. look kind of stance to it. I mean, it's definitely yeah. a yeah. pretty sweet build. So, um, I guess, what else should we cover? We covered horsepower. We covered wheelbase. Do you know how wide it is? What's the I wheel? Don't, I don't know the track width. Uh, I know it's a little bit wider than yours. Yeah, and I'm at like 81, 82 yeah. ish. So you're probably 84 yeah. ish. I mean, I had to rebuild the trailer to fit it on there. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's pretty wide. <laughs> yeah. Um, we can do see. links. Uh, the suspension. Oh yeah, yeah. suspension. We should suspension. definitely talk about the suspension. It's a rear double triangulated four link in the rear. The front is a parallel four link with pan hard bar. And then you know full hydro steering and all that stuff, but uh, and yeah. we we haven't ever had we haven't had it on RTI ramp yet. <clears throat> no, I mean it's not I, it's not a super crazy flex monster. I have it limited. Uh, I kind of like the stability of it. Um, I have the rear kind of set up to give me to attempt to stay square with the chassis. That gives me a little bit of stability and some stuff. But yeah, I mean it flexes really well. It's just not it's not you know. It's I don't not, think it's going to be winning any competition. Yeah, so it's on fourteen inch keen. Mine's the same way. I yeah. used to, I used to think flex was all. Yeah. But once I built a few of these, I realized that yeah. it's not near as important as I thought. Yeah, yeah. You need yeah, you some. Want, you want and you want weight on you the tires. You want some. And you thing. yeah yeah so totally. <laughs> as long as I have three on the ground, it'll usually go forward. So. So I guess here we would go. F what are the future modifications? What things would you change? You just you had it down for a few <clears throat> years. Yeah. You've had it for like six months now, yeah. and now you're taking it to Moab. Well, that's so. one of the one of the big problems with building something over a year is you change your mind a lot while you're building it. And I don't know, there's pluses and minuses to that. It costs a lot of money when you do that. But uh, I was able to change some stuff in the process of building the Jeep, which took longer but made me happier with it. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I didn't really know that I was going to encounter was uh, the 4L80, which is there's not a whole lot of options for automatic transmissions with the power that you're make that I'm making. Um, it has a really horrible first gear though, super tall first for off gear. road. Killer yeah. for the track though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be yeah, great yeah, if absolutely. you were building the truck for yeah. quarter mile times. Yep. yep. Um, but it's not very low. No. Do you remember what it is? I'd say it's like two forty eight. Oh yeah, that's right. It's something. It's crazy. crazy and, and just high. for reference, the the six L ninety, which is the six speed, which would be a maybe an option, is like four oh three. Yeah. So it, and it's with my humongous. Jeep, it's a manual. First gear is a four to one. Yeah. So like, for a six speed, yeah. the first gear to be four to one would be awesome. I mean, that for off road, that that would be perfect for this. Yeah. But he'd have to reinvent the wheel yeah. <laughs> in yeah. order to get it in there. I mean, yeah, the the floor, the seat bars is every everything's built like with one in less than one inch clearance for this transmission, and it's all built to work together. Yeah, it's just there's not so yeah. so as far as future mods go, the transmission is a question mark. Yeah, you want to keep this because it makes sense because it's yeah. already made it to the Jeep. Yeah, but you also wish you had a lower first gear. Yep. Yeah, and I mean you can buy first gear, but it's it think it brings you up to like a two two ninety, and it's like fifteen hundred dollars a gear or something like that. So it's 
And so the other option would be lower T case. Yep. But then that what sucks is that where your T case is set up now is kind of perfect for some stuff. Yep. So a four speed would be an option, an Atlas or something like that. But but I think that you'd be breaking it. Yeah. And that's so I, I don't know. My question for you guys, <laughs> and put this in the comments. Yeah. Does somebody make like a crawl box or something that would go yeah. in front of his transfer case uh, that would give him an extra reduction, so like a two to one reduction or something like that? That could handle the kind of power he's making, yeah. um, and also not be a mile long. Like, is, is, does somebody make something? Because I know there's a lot of really small companies out there that will just machine random stuff like this. So, if you know of something that's going to help him out to make it to where uh, he has the option to go lower on the rocky stuff, yeah. then please put that in the comments because yeah. you'd really be helping us out. But aside from that, I mean, you seem pretty happy with the rest of it. Yeah, it, I mean, I it wanna, goes and stops yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. I want to change some aesthetics. So I'm not 100% complete with it. I still don't have a heater. Oh, or yeah. windshield wipers. Windshield wipers. And he lives in very, Washington. Very fun on Pritchett Canyon. <laughs> yeah. Um, it rained on Pritchett yeah. Canyon and he didn't have Six wipers. inches a year down there and we, we got at least one inch of it. Yeah, so, for sure. You know, it just Sometimes it works out that way. Um, some aesthetics, like I said. And just still with the four link and the coilovers and bump stops, there's a lot of fine tuning kind of stuff. and It, nev I, I, it never I, stops. I go to the dunes and I, you know, do rocks and every every terrain needs a different setup so yeah so trying to make yeah. a it's so hard to make a swiss army yep. knife of four by four have multiple rigs it, so, like yeah. me yeah. that's why i keep building yeah. different stuff because yeah. <laughs> it might almost be cheaper at this point <laughs> yeah <laughs> so. so if you guys have any questions for andy something that we didn't ca uh cover like yeah. just some sort of a technical specification whatever yeah. or even just curious what fuel pump he used or whatever yeah. uh put that in the comments below and he, i'm sure he'll be happy to go through and answer whatever questions yeah. you might have so now I'm going to do, I'm not sure how to do walk around videos yet. So this is just an experiment. We're doing an interview. And then after this, I want to do like a little cinematic thing of just a bunch of cool footage that I've got of him uh, out just beating on this thing. And we'll put it to music and we'll make this the end of the video. So if you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Follow Andy. He's got an Instagram at uh, Andy underscore caps. Andy underscore caps. Yeah, and as that's usual. K-A-P-P-S. K-A-P-P-S. Yeah. And as usual. I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time. Uh. 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 Yeah. 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 Uh. Pardon me in my tone. You can't step to my throne. They ain't working like me. I did this on my own. You asking where we been? I don't know where to begin. This dirt on my skin. I just came here to win. It's not a game, why you playing with me? You could double back, lose track, try and hang with me. It must be in my veins. Something you can't tame, cause I break the chains. Can't control me. I got the power. I got the keys. Cause I break the chains. They try to hold me. Push back, just wait and you'll see. Major look, huh? Yeah, this one is for the books. All these chances I took still. I move straight on these rooks now. Hold me up or hold me down, uh. Have my back or hold my crown. Either you with me or not, but you better give all you got, cause I break the chains. Can't control me I got the power I got the keys Cause I break the chain